Hey, so this is going to be an intro to PyTorch, and it's going to be a lot different than any other PyTorch intro that you've ever seen. Most PyTorch intros, they start off kind of boring, right? They start off by going over what the data types are, the functions are, before getting into the actual machine learning, the actual neural networks. So you're learning all these functions, and you don't really know the context, right? The application of them. So I'm going to do this completely differently. We're just going to go straight to the chase. We're going to cover only the absolute essentials that you need to know to start coding up neural networks. So we're gonna go over tensors, we're gonna do a really quick neural network review. For anyone who's not familiar, you're gonna find that useful. And then we're gonna go straight to modules and coding up neural networks. Let's get started. All right, let's get into tensors. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna import PyTorch. And the environment I'm using here is Google Colab. I highly recommend it. I'll link it in the description. It's way more convenient than using a local environment because all the dependencies already come installed. So you don't really have to manage any of those. You can just import the libraries just like that. So what is a tensor? This is the fundamental data type of PyTorch and it's really just an array or a matrix except they can be multi-dimensional so we can have three dimensional four dimensional five dimensional we can have five by three by four tensors they are arrays and they can be multi-dimensional but they are obviously a bit more complex than just simple arrays they actually carry important attributes under the hood and we'll go over that in another video it'll be linked in the description but they'll carry important attributes under the hood that are used to train machine learning models and effectively takes care of all the math for us so it's Tensors are a very special data type of PyTorch. The PyTorch library also comes with a ton of efficient implementation for matrix multiplication and a ton of other math operations. So whenever we're dealing with machine learning models, especially deep learning models, we want to wrap our data in tensors instead of, say, Python lists. And we'll definitely get into that soon. OK, so let's just create our first tensor. This is going to be a five by five tensor of all ones. You can go in and run the code and we can see our tensor right there. I could actually make this a five by five by five tensor if we wanted a three dimensional tensor you can go ahead and run that and we can definitely see that indeed we have a five by five by five tensor as mentioned earlier we can also create tensors from python lists and we can use the torch dot tensor api for this so we can just pass in a python list like one two three go ahead and actually call the function and now we can see the data wrapped in a tensor and this might seem kind of trivial like we already have the data in a python list this is definitely going to be important later on once we start actually training models and passing data into models because we want to put all our data in tensors so we can take advantage of all the functions that pytorch offers Offers. And we can also actually just add two tensors together just like that. And it's actually just going to add up all the numbers index by index. So here we can see we have two, three, four, because we added one to each element of the first tensor. So torch.ones and sending in a three just creates a tensor of size three with a one at each index. Okay, on to our 60 second neural network review. If you're already familiar with neural networks, you can probably just skip this using the chapters in the description. But if you're not familiar with neural networks, this part's going to be essential. Everything else is going to depend on having a general understanding of neural networks. So stick around for the 60 seconds. I'll go through it as fast as possible so we can get back to the code since I know that's what you came to this video for. Okay, so a neural network diagram should be popping up on the screen now. And in 60 seconds, we're going to break it down. And if you stick around until the end of the video, we're going to learn how to actually code up this diagram. So kind of take this diagram and translate it into code into a PyTorch class. That's what we're going to do by the end of the video. So fundamentally, a neural network is just something we use to make predictions. So let's say we want to predict your success on dating apps like Tinder or Hinge. And we have three input attributes, x1, x2, and x3. Let's say x1 is like a number on a scale of 1 to 10. It represents your attractiveness of your profile photo. Number two is like how clever your bio is, like that one line bio that you get to have. And then number three, x3, would be how clever your pickup lines are on a scale of 1 to 10. So we have three numbers here, x1, x2, and x3. And these are going to be the things that will ultimately predict the output. So our ultimate goal is to predict a number one output number in that final column that we see on the right. And let's say that's something like predicted number of swipes or matches that you'll actually get on the dating app. So the middle layer, also called the hidden layer or the hidden column, that's where the magic happens in a neural network. That's where all the multiplications and additions, or at least the bulk of them, are actually going to happen. So each node in that hidden layer is going to be using this equation. And the inputs to that equation are just going to be x1, x2, x3 from the first column, the leftmost input column. And for each of those hidden nodes, or essentially circles in that central middle column of the diagram, we have these numbers w1, w2, 
W3, and B. And we have kind of those four numbers for each of those nodes in the middle of the diagram. And these are called the model parameters. And the whole process of training a model is actually just finding the best values, the best numbers for all those parameters, the W's and the B's, so that we actually have like fairly accurate outputs. So let's say we have a sample data point X1, X2, X3. When we get to that middle column, each of those nodes independently or in parallel, we're going to predict a number. So we have four numbers now. We'll call that Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4. Now we need to get one final output number O. So that final output node is going to use this equation and it's going to have Y1 through Y4 as input and it's going to actually figure out or learn the best values for W1, W2, W3, W4, and B so that we have a fairly accurate output. And that's honestly the gist of a neural network. There's definitely some more details called nonlinear functions. They'll have one pop up soon, but we'll go over that in another video. And that's generally all there is to it. We're just multiplying and adding up numbers and ultimately trying to adjust the model, find the right parameters so that we can have fairly accurate predictions. So the rest of this video is going to be about modules, the essence of PyTorch. It's going to be about how we can actually code up this diagram in PyTorch in a class. So fundamentally, modules are nothing more than a building block, a building block to build other modules or neural network models. And if you're familiar with front end development, they're actually kind of similar to components in React. They're very reusable, they're very modular, and we're going to stack them together to build other models. So there's a few or actually a couple components of every PyTorch module. Let's quickly go over them. So the first thing we need is this import statement torch.nn as nn. nn stands for neural network, and this import statement is goaded. It's going to unlock a ton of other layers and neural network models within PyTorch that we can actually use to stack together and build bigger models and ultimately train them. So here I've written a simple example of a PyTorch model that we're actually going to build. And in another video, it's linked in the description, we'll even train it. So I've actually went ahead and written a very simple model right here. And there's around three components to every PyTorch module. Let's quickly go over them. So first, you'll actually see the init function and the forward function. So the init function is just like the constructor for this class. This is where we're going to actually define the neural network layers. We define the input layer, the middle or hidden layer, and the final output layer. And we'll actually define the number of nodes in each layer. Just going to describe the diagram in this layer. In the other function, the forward function, and again, every single PyTorch module has to have these two functions. In the forward function, we're actually going to take in some arbitrary data point, x1, x2, and x3. And we're going to actually do all those multiplications and additions we talked about earlier. And we're going to return the final model prediction or the model output. Okay, what about this other part right here, nn.module? So every single PyTorch model or module that you write has to actually be a subclass for nn.module. So in Python, when we write some sort of name, like in parentheses after the class, we're simply saying that our class subclasses or inherits that class. So every PyTorch model you write is a subclass of this like mega parent base class called nn.module, which is just used to define all neural networks. And every subclass of nn.module needs to have an init function and a forward function. So here I've went ahead and just written some comments and actually written the function headers. So the first one we have is the init function. Every Python class needs to have an init function and we'll just go ahead and pass in self. That's just common Python syntax. If you're not familiar with that, no worries. And that's where we're going to define the model structure. In the next function, the forward function, we're actually going to obviously have self. Uh, if you're not familiar with self, it's not too important for this video. Don't worry about that for now. And we're also going to pass in X. So X is going to be like a Python list or an actual PyTorch tensor of size three, where we have X1, X2, and X3, essentially the input data that's going to be passed into the model to ultimately calculate the model prediction. All right, now we're going to get to the interesting stuff. So I talked about all those equations earlier where we multiply and add up numbers inside a neural network. Thankfully, we won't have to actually write out those equations. There's already some existing modules or layers, we'll use those terms interchangeably, in PyTorch that we can use as building blocks to create our neural network. So there's actually this class, we can look at the PyTorch documentation called nn.linear. And nn.linear is another subclass. If you were to look at the source code here, it'll be a subclass of nn.module. So it has its own init function that defines some equations. Actually, it's going to be done with matrices. And it's also going to have its own forward function that we can just call essentially defining our neural network, right? Our forward function is just going to be chaining together or stringing together forward function 
and calls for essentially a few different instances of this class, which will define in the constructor. If that didn't make sense, no worries. We're about to dive into the code line by line and break it down. All right, so now let's use nn.linear to actually define this diagram right here. So we see three columns or three layers, the input layer, the middle or hidden layer, and the final output layer. We actually only have to define something for the hidden layer and actually the final output layer since the input layer just stores our input attributes, right? It doesn't actually do any calculations with the equations we talked about earlier. And when we make an instance of nn.linear, there's actually just two things we have to pass into PyTorch, the number of input attributes and the number of output attributes or the number of nodes that that layer is going to actually have. And essentially how many values is that layer going to calculate? So that might sound a little confusing. So let's write that in code. So we'll go in and say self.hidden. So we're defining this instance variable for this class by calling it hidden or using the self syntax from Python. If you're not familiar with that, no worries. We'll actually go ahead and just define nn.linear and we'll go ahead and pass in three and four. So this is telling PyTorch that, hey, we want a linear layer, a linear hidden layer, just linear calculations, no nonlinear functions yet, just multiplying and adding up numbers. And we're going to actually have three input attributes. And this model is going to have, or this layer is going to have four hidden nodes. All right, so next let's define the output layer. This one should be pretty straightforward, right? Because we already know the number of input at inputs to this layer, right? That would just be the number of nodes in the hidden layer. So we can go ahead and say self.output is nn.linear and we'll go in and have four inputs and one final number for our output. So this is going to actually take care of the equation that that layer uses. All right, now that we have our two layers defined, our two linear layers, let's go ahead and use them and quickly return the model's prediction. So it might be tempting to just do something like this, right? Hidden output. So the output from the hidden layer, which is essentially just those four numbers in the middle of the neural network, it's tempting to just say self.hidden and then call its forward method by saying dot forward and pass in x. And then we we can just return self.output and we want to call the forward method for that linear model as well. Remember, those nn.linear instances are also subclasses of nn.module, so they will have a forward method. We can just pass in the hidden output and this will work. This will work. You'll get the correct desired output. But there's just one thing we can do to make this a bit cleaner. So I went ahead and already made the change. So instead of explicitly writing dot forward, we can just use this parentheses syntax since the way PyTorch is written and because of something called a call function in Python, Python will know that we're trying to call the forward method if we just use this simple parentheses syntax. So we can just pass in x into self.hidden. We get the hidden output, which is essentially just those four numbers, right? Y1 through Y4. And we want to pass that into the final layer, the output layer. So we can just use that same syntax again and return the output. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. But the data in the world is not strictly linear, right? We know that there's nonlinear and very complex relationships in data. And that's where nonlinear functions are active activation functions come into the picture. And then once we have this model, right, we still have to train it. We've just kind of defined the structure of the model. But if we try to use this model and get some predictions, they're going to be garbage. They're not going to be accurate because we haven't actually trained the model on any kind of data set. So I have another video that covers all of these details. It's linked in the description and pinned comment. Check it out and I'll see you soon.